Welcome to the deep dive. So today we're unpacking what our sources are calling the Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. Yeah, it's a really stark picture for the first part of January 2026. We're seeing this uh, massive structural fracture in the atmosphere that has basically split Europe and Russia into two completely different worlds. Wildly different. And our mission today is to really get into the mechanics of that split. So what's the engine behind all this chaos? The driver is immense and it all happens so fast. We're talking about a major sudden stratospheric warming event and SSW. Okay, so that's high up in the atmosphere. Way up. And you can think of the stratosphere as the atmosphere's engine room. When it failed, it wasn't a gentle breakdown. What do you mean? I mean, temperatures right at the pole spiked by nearly 50 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees in just a few days. In a matter of days. That thermal shock just led to a complete catastrophic collapse of the stratospheric polar vortex. It just, mm -hmm. it split apart. So when that big circulation system breaks down high up, how does that chaos, you know, translate down to the ground where we all live? It's essentially a massive release valve. Yeah. All that contained frigid Arctic air is literally dumped south into the mid latitudes. And it needs something to pin it in place, yep. right? It doesn't just spread out everywhere. Exactly. And what's locking this particular cold outbreak in place is a synoptic setup known as a Rex block. A Rex block? Yeah, think of it as a huge immovable atmospheric boulder sitting over the Atlantic. It forces everything to go around it. Which is why we get this incredible split. Let's track that. Out west, you have the Iberian Peninsula bracing for storm francis right a really high energy system it's forecast to dump just huge amounts of rain we're talking 50 liters per square meter in the canary islands and even in mainland spain if that atlantic warmth from the storm clashes with the cold air being held in place by that boulder you could suddenly see snow at surprisingly low altitudes it's a real battleground of air masses and then just a few hundred miles north you get the other half of that fracture the uh, severe Arctic plunge hitting the UK and Ireland. Oh, that air mass is just brutalizing the UK. The Met Office has issued ember warnings all across northern and eastern Scotland. And that's not just a weather warning, is it? We're talking about real public health implications. Absolutely. The UK Health Security Agency has its own amber cold health alerts out. There's a serious risk of isolation for some communities, especially with 10 to 20 centimeters of low-level snow and blizzard conditions. And as cold as the UK is, it's really just the western edge of this vast cold mass. Yeah. Where's the epicenter of this thing? That would be the severe continental winter regime, Eastern Europe and Siberia. I mean, they recorded a low of minus 56 Celsius in Yakutsk. Minus 56, it's hard to even comprehend that. It's a temperature where exposed skin freezes in minutes and that Siberian air is marching west. Moscow is forecast for a drop down to around minus 15 Celsius between January 9th and 11th. So we have this massive frigid air outlook. And this brings us to the question that you, the listener, are probably asking. If the planet is warming, why are we seeing these chaotic, deep, cold snaps? This is the climate paradox, and you have to connect the dots using the principle of Arctic amplification. The Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. About four times faster. And the engine of our weather is the temperature difference, the gradient between the pole and the equator. If that temperature difference shrinks, the whole machine slows down. The polar jet stream, which used to be this strong, fast fence keeping the cold air locked up, it gets weak, wobbly. So it's less like a tightrope and more like a lazy river. A perfect analogy. And those deep, lazy bends are what allow frigid air to plunge deep south and get stuck, often reinforced by blocking patterns like our Rex block. And our sources mention something else compounding this. Yes, the record low sea ice in the Barentsankara Seas. That open water dumps extra heat and moisture into the atmosphere, right where it can weaken the polar vortex. It's a textbook situation for a severe cold outbreak. And this intensity isn't just a number on a thermometer. It's really stress testing infrastructure, isn't it? Absolutely. The sources highlight how the sustained cold, combined with the UK's declining North Sea gas pipeline infrastructure, is creating a real energy security vulnerability. And elsewhere. We'll look east to the Caucasus. Around Ghadari in Georgia, the avalanche risk is getting very high. It's the extreme temperature swings leading up to the heavy snow that really destabilizes the snowpack. The sheer intensity of this whole divergence suggests these events aren't just, you know, statistical outliers anymore. Our source material points toward a state of what it calls cyclic instability, becoming the new norm for modern winters. So I guess the question for you to consider is this. 
if this pattern holds brief mild pushes of air followed by these recurring severe cold plunges what kind of sustained structural stress does that put on our society on our energy grids our supply chains everything that was designed for a very different and frankly a more stable kind of winter